by the time he gets to one guy more up to speed, I think if we have some opportunities to start saying what are we going to do with a five year, we should ask if that's in there. Or at least we should ask Ellen, is, is that in there? Is that part of his duties? Maybe the challenge here is that we don't specifically know his duties or we haven't defined them ourselves. We haven't said, what do we want for this year, one year uh, contract, or, or this one year consulting commitment? So, uh, you know, uh, I'm with you. I'm a little, have some trepidation. Uh, but on the other hand, you know, I, I'm not sure I understand when we say, oh, we could have hired uh, someone else. You can't really hire somebody else, okay, uh, because it is O&M, and I know we got the stimulus money, but even that doesn't quite apply because the stimulus money had to be spent in one year. So you're not going to hire a special ed coordinator and say, oh, by the way, your job's gone in a year, okay. Uh, so I don't think the two quite overlay. And um, what uh, what's what is the is it a month to month contract, Alan? Alan, is it a month to month contract, or is it a yearly contract? No, it's a year long contract. Year. Okay. I mean, as we're discussing on this, I think we all know that Mike Linder probably really is the best person for the job that you know we've seen him in action. Um, and for we put it out there. You know, right. Twice right. and interviewed other people. So do we have other discussion? Just uh, based on the, the, the independent contractor status, it's, we're obviously voting for approval or tonight. Um, what happens if that changes? Let us know, Ellen. Ellen, if the status as to whether it's an independent contractor or not changes, will you let the board know? I will let you know as soon as I find out. All right, so how do we do the vote? Can we table this to the next board meeting before we get that information? Whether he's a 1099 employee or a W-2 employee. Does anyone want to make a motion for that? Michael's asking if we can table that discussion, Ellen, depending on if he's a W-2 or a 1099. So now they're discussing that. So you just want to make sure. I, I would rather not. I'd rather have you both go one way or the other. This is taking on too long. I mean, does it cost the taxpayers if, if he's not 1099 and he's W-2? Do we have to pay as a district into IMRF on his behalf? Yes. So I would like to table this. Can I get a motion? Well, what was Let me know for sure. She went through the. She said there were ten to twelve some criteria that we were qualified to do. Is that right, Ellen? That it's not been a hundred percent determined. turns out not to be the case, then we remove the position. And we'll have to reconsider it. We'll have to reconsider it, right. But it, it does make a big difference because we're adding another employee to the district. I would, I would agree. Whether it's Michael or anybody else, we have, that's why you, Well, I agree that we can vote on a 1099. Actually, I think, I think I can see the compromise that you want not to get into another employee district. Just to get and, uh, and, and so I would go along with Ray's suggestion that we vote on it with the language 
that says he is an uh, independent contractor, 1099. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Ellen, is that acceptable if they vote on it as a 1099 position? And then you would just keep the board informed if there were a change. Yeah. Is that acceptable? Um, next on the agenda is um, the resolution for the sale of the IC building as a closed bid. Um, as my fellow board members probably recall, um, we had discussed the two options of auction versus closed bid. We had decided to move forward. Uh, this is just the formality of, of approving that. So if, if, um, we have, we'll have a lot more discussion after the bids are open and what we're going to do with money if we actually sell it and all that sort of thing. But is everybody comfortable with that we're just going to move forward with saying we're going to go forward with the process of the closed bid? And I, thought, I thought that had already been it, it, it done has, the first it, time. It has been done. Okay, we, so we're, we're redoing it. We're, ju we're just doing it formally. formally. Okay. Okay? Is that okay with everyone? Okay, um, next on the agenda is the action item for approval, recommendation for hiring the facilities engineer consultant. So moved. Okay, um, before we do, are you okay? As, it, as 1099. As 1099. Um, just as a, as a sidelight of a little piece of um, discussion. So, real quick, do we need to restate it since we, yeah. can okay. you restate the motion please? All right, so the approval of recommendation of hiring the facilities manager consultant as a 1099 employee. So moved. Second. Okay, and as a way of one further discussion item, I just have something that I would like to read before we do the roll call. Um, very shortly, the board will be asked to take action on the facilities manager position, a new consultant position. As discussed previously, I continue to believe that this position will provide great value to the district. I also believe after review of a number of potential candidates for this position that Mike Linder is the most qualified applicant for the job. However, in the last few weeks, this position, and specifically the selection of Mike Linder, has been made into a political issue by a few members of the community. This is most unfortunate since the real issues of why the position is needed who the most appropriate applicant is, and how we fund this position has been obscured. Further delay of the action isn't possible. Therefore, during the vote, I say with regret that I can't support the hire of the position at this time. And I'll give you this for the record, and can we have a roll call please, Lord? Next action item is the approval of the resolution to sell the, I to sell the ISC building.